Hey, what's up everyone? BDF44 here coming at you with another video. All right, so I've learned my lesson. I've learned my lesson. These last couple games, I've come to you, didn't watch the game, didn't watch the game, had these highlights in my face, giving me all kinds of bad information, not giving me any context. I'm not going to pretend to know what happened tonight. I saw highlights. I saw the fourth quarter. But I did not see the entire game. So there's parts of this this puzzle missing from my, my mind, and I'm not going to be pretentious and tell you things that I'm just not certain of. But what I can tell you is what I am. Listen, the Lakers still dealing with injuries. There are big pieces missing from this team. And until those pieces get back, we're going to struggle in every game we play in. And it's not necessarily because those pieces are missing. It's because while those pieces are missing, our coach has no idea what to do to keep us competitive with the limited players that we have and the limited circumstances. Um, it's limited time that we've had to put this thing together. I, I have been fighting myself so much on this channel trying not to kill Frank Vogel, y'all. I'm trying because I get it. It's just not really a full spectrum of of what it is that he's supposed to be half down there you don't have your full team you don't have lebron james i'm trying i'm trying but there are certain things that i just can't shake the third quarter we were up by four points or something like that to start that quarter timberwolves dropped 40 points on the Lakers in the third quarter. In our own gym. <clears throat> 40 points. And what I saw. Was what I always tell you guys I see. Down the stretch of these games. He did it in the third quarter this time. He put a small ball lineup on the floor. Matched up against Minnesota's big players. And we got our boots smoked. They rebounded the ball. They, they defended us. And they shot the three ball very, very well. And the Lakers were helpless. Helpless. And I got to say this. It's because I haven't seen these games. I haven't been able to assess Kent Bays more. But I have been listening to what Laker Nation has been telling me. And he's struggling. I saw what I needed to see tonight to understand that. As soon as he got on the floor, the score got out of hand. Now, I'm not saying it's all on him. But what I am saying is... He had zero points tonight, 16 minutes, and as soon as he got on the floor, the game got out of hand. As, I mean, as soon as Coach put him in the game in the third quarter, everything fell apart. Now, I don't know if that's correlated to him being the problem, Coach putting him in lineups that happened to be problematic, him not playing well, combination of all three. I do not know what is going on because obviously I'm limited in what I can see, but it's no secret that he is struggling. That's no secret. Um, I want to say Russell Westbrook, during the time, the third quarter, when the game was getting out of hand, he was not in the game until the lead was already up to about eight, from what I saw. He wasn't necessarily the reason got the game out of the hand at all. He was hitting his three-point shot. I did see him turn the ball over really poorly in one sequence that I was able to see. Uh, but, but... All in all, the deficit itself, that big 33-point deficit or whatever it ended up being, I, I don't think he was the main reason why that was the case. I think he was kind of just a byproduct of the problem, more so than the, the focal point tonight. I just think that the issue really tonight was Frank Vogel's choices in the combination of players that he put on the floor tonight um, in that third quarter. It was just not going to work. You know, you you put Avery Bradley, he had Wayne Ellington, he had... Kent Bazemore, I think he went with like Rondo and then AD. I'm telling you, y'all, that team ain't beating nobody. That team ain't beating a single soul. Not in this league, not enough size, not enough defense. When you forego defense, and see, this is the thing that the Lakers fans have been trying to prepare us for. When you let guys like KCP and Alex Caruso walk out the door, and then you proceed to bring in non-defensive guards, you are going to struggle because it's going to put more pressure on your bigs to be effective. And if they cannot be effective defensively, boom, you have nothing keeping you, uh, keeping the defense, uh, keeping the offense from scoring the ball against you. 
That's what I'm trying to say. You ain't got no defense. It's a turnstile. It's, it's, it's Matador defense. It's, it's come on through. That's what it looks like out there. And I like Wayne Ellington, guys that can shoot. You know, Malik Monk, those guys are shooters. But when it comes to the defensive end, you have to give up something, and that's what you're giving up. And we can't afford to give up plays on the defensive end because we already have issues defensively. I saw more sequences uh, in the highlights uh, with, with, with AD getting out rebounded, and I keep saying he's a fantastic statistical rebounder, but if you watch him, he's getting outboarded by the likes of people like Jared Vanderbilt and stuff. This is happening a lot, and I keep telling people, AD playing the center makes us good offensively as it pertains to him being able to score on anybody at the center position, but on the defensive end, he does have trouble rebounding the ball against players who probably shouldn't have issues rebounding against. And I don't care if he walks away with 18 boards. My eyes are telling me he's struggling, rebounding, and positioning. He gets bumped out the way. He gets boxed out easier than he should for his length. I can't help but notice that when he's the center on the floor and we don't have nothing but him on the ground as a rebounder, we don't board the ball. I know everyone's in love with him playing the center position. I keep hearing people say, I love playing the center position. The Lakers are better when he is at the four. Tonight was the case. Because we saw when we had him at the center and we put all those non-defensive guards on the floor, you know what happened? The score got out of hand. Period. At some point in time, somebody needs to acknowledge this but me. I can't be the only person acknowledging this because everybody seems to be in love with him playing the five except for me. Period. He can, he can score. But he be getting outboarded, man, and we have issues on the boards. So that was something that noticed tonight. <laughs> Even though, you know, it was limited, I was able to see that much. Um, I, I saw some good minutes out of Seiko, D, Seiko Dimboya. Uh, I think I think he's trying to earn some playing time, and I like what I saw in the fourth quarter in garbage minutes. Um, so that was a highlight, a positive thing. Uh, but it wasn't a whole lot of positive things to say, man, honestly. I mean, we got San Antonio coming up. We can burn this tape and move on. But I expect San Antonio to give us trouble as well. They got a nice young team, uh, and we seem to be struggling with everybody defensively everybody you know what i mean i'm looking over around the league i'm looking at steph curry looking like he's gonna grab him another mvp trophy at this point i'm looking at all these different players going off joe could chat a triple double i think tonight something like 19 boards reality is setting in for the lakers the field is not going to be kind to you just because you're the lakers and you got all these great players and you wear this purple and gold does not mean that you're entitled to being victorious this season if you don't figure out what it is that you need to figure out and stop putting these terrible small ball lineups on the floor to get blown out by these teams. We're not going to make the playoffs. Forget the championships. We're not going to make the playoffs. just want that to settle in because I don't think people are really even looking at it like that. I am. And I'm very serious. These injuries are starting to pile up. And I'm looking at this situation. And I'm saying, ain't no foregone conclusion the Lakers going to make it through the West. Ain't no foregone conclusion. That we just gonna get to get through there and just do what we gotta do. <laughs> Things have to be done execution wise that we I don't see. Like even down the horizon, you know when you look down and see well, you can kinda see where the Lakers are gonna pull it together. I don't there's no light at the end of this tunnel. Not as far as I can tell. Only thing that's gonna help us is if, if the Lakers find a way <laughs> to shuffle the deck a little bit with this roster and get us some defensive players that can actually guard the ball. That's it. I mean, I don't give a damn how much star power you have. If your guards can't stay in front of people, you are going to lose. And that is exactly what's happening to us. So I would suggest the Lakers be looking to try to s snag a Marcus Smart type. We need somebody like that, man. Snag a, 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 a Patrick Beverly type. You need someone like that. You need a dog on a defensive end at the guard spot. Because when we, Caruso and, and KCP left, our defense left with him. Period. There's no way around it. We suck defensively. We don't have the personnel to necessarily get better. And our coach doesn't seem to improvise well in these circumstances. Which is a problem. Because we're in these circumstances. And that's where we're headed. Look, Frank has won a championship with us, so he has a hell of a rope. But some of the things that he's done in purple and gold have not worked. That whole situation with Montrez Harrell, I've said it a million times. That was enough for me. I was cool. I would have fired him after that. 
especially seeing how Trez is playing right now, that was enough. That was a fireable offense for me. You can't get nothing out of a player that won six man of the year the previous year. Couldn't get nothing out of him. And we didn't even get out of the first round. You should have been fired. <laughs> but people gave you an opportunity. Braun and them, I guess, they, they on board. So they're going to live and die with you. I get it. But you're a defensive coach. Our defense sucks. Our offense sucks. What's up? What are we going to do? That's where we're at with it. <laughs> this team ain't getting no better. The field is getting better, and that's that. That is that. I look around at every team in the league. I say, we could lose any one of them teams. I look at San Antonio. I don't think we're favored to beat them. I don't. I, I look at how Thaddeus Young's been playing, filling up the box score, doing everything on the defensive end and offensive end. I look at how they got going on with Keldon Johnson. He's rebounding the ball like a madman. I look at DeJounte Murray. Look like he wants to make his first all-star appearance this season. You know, they got some new guys. I think some dude named Eubanks or something. Brand new guy that's stepping out, doing some things to San Antonio. You can't play around with these teams. Not a Popovich-led team. You you just got beat by Ant-Man and, and D-Lo. How the hell are you going to beat a Popovich-led squad? And these are the type of things the Lakers are running into. Teams where you would otherwise have confidence we would beat, even without LeBron James. Now you're looking at some of the stuff that's happening down there without LeBron James. You're saying, we can't beat those players. We can't beat those teams. We cannot beat some of the most young and developing franchises in the league right now. I could argue we're one of the worst teams in basketball today. So our record is better than we are as of right now, in my opinion. It really is. Our record is better than us. We are not our record. <clears throat> and, and that's the thing, man. It's like when the injuries start you know, to, to kind of wear off. We start getting THT back. We start getting LeBron back. We start getting these guys back. I still have my concerns about what we're going to look like. I do. Because those guys coming back, believe it or not, I don't know that they make us that much better defensively. I like THT, but he's not the most effective defensive player. He has fantastic hands and metrics and things like that that will translate to defense, but he's not a defensive dynamo just yet. He has to develop into that. Our bigs are a bit older and They're getting outworked in some cases Even though they're working hard They're getting outworked Saw some good shooting out of guys though if We've been talking about Wayne Ellington The shooting is falling You know, Those guys are shooters They can't defend but the, what they can do They can do And and I saw some good stuff out of Malik and, and, and Wayne in that way But let me tell you something We miss Austin Reeves as well Um it was great having Rondo out there tonight. I saw that he 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 got, he got the ball up. We were putting the ball in his hands more to assist and make plays. Took the ball out of Rondo's hands, it seemed, based on the box score. So I don't know if that's what it actually was. But I think Rondo had about eight assists. Russi had about three. I think, if, if I'm reading that correctly, that's, that's exactly what I'm hoping to see. Us take the responsibilities of facilitating out of Russell's hands and allowing it to be in other people's hands. I think that'll help us cut down on our turnovers. So that's a positive. If I want to take from that, that's a positive. Less Russell passes, more Rondo passes in this process is, is, is best for us. Um, but we got to keep a big on the floor at all times. And I ain't talking about AD. I'm talking about a center. It has to be either DJ or Dwight. They have to be on the floor at all times. I'm sorry, Laker fans. I know y'all love three-point shooting. I know y'all like AD at the center. But as long as he's playing the center, we're not going to win. I don't give a damn what the analysts tell you. I don't care what nobody tells you. Tonight was a prime example of why, absolutely why, we need big players on the floor besides him, period. It's why he didn't want to play the center. It's why we shouldn't want him to play the center, period. I'm, I'm tired of playing about this. I'm tired of watching this team struggle. Uh, and people just ignoring the fact that it's, 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 it's always a correlation between us having small players on the floor and us getting blown out. I feel like I'm the only person who sees it. So, there's that. Um, yeah, man. Not a whole lot to like. Uh, just move on, burn the tape. You know, take from it what you can. Uh, good conditioning progress from players who were recently injured that's all i can really take from it wayne ellington and malik monk are getting healthier that's my positive uh that's what i got i mean 
everything else is just us getting blown out. The, it, you want to talk about the Minnesota Timberwolves? D'Angelo Russell shot us, shot us away. He shot us out of here. <laughs> Got to give him credit. Um, you know, you want to give Ant Man credit as well. He's coming off of what a forty-nine point game against the Warriors. Came in here, played very well. He didn't have big numbers, but his presence was felt. <laughs> Their role players did what they were supposed to do. Patrick Beverly made his presence felt strong. Carl Towns obviously had a big time game. I think he scored like 28 points. Didn't rebound very, very heavily, but didn't need to. Um, you know, easy win for the for the for the for the Wolves. Very easy win for the Wolves on the road against the Lakers. Uh, I got another positive takeaway from it. The uniforms look a lot better than I thought. I hated those uniforms all up until tonight. When I actually saw the players run around in them, they look good. I like the new city uniforms after all. So. That's that's a positive. Unfortunately, we didn't get a win in them, but the jerseys look good. So, yeah, man, not a whole lot to like. Not a whole lot to like, but we do got San Antonio coming up. Um, the road trips begin. The road trips begin. I don't think we're going to have another game in Staples, I think, until around Thanksgiving, I think is what they said. So, yeah, our homestand, we've enjoyed a lot of games at Staples Center. It's time to get on a plane and start start dealing with the road. So, if, if people are thinking the Lakers are going to get better on the road, I don't expect that. I don't expect that. I, I expect us to continue to struggle until we get our players back. But THT has been cleared to practice in full con full contact practice. So hopefully we'll have him back in the lineup for that game. I'm hopeful. Haven't heard anything about that, but I I, I think it's close. He's close. So and Braun, they said again, is is progressing well. So he's he should be uh, back soon as well. So. Once he gets back, we can start stabilizing things. Of course, he'll start erasing some of these deficits on his own. He'll get us some victories in some of these games. But, uh, man, oh, man, do we have issues. And the thing about the Lakers, and, and I'm sure most of you guys understand this, is because we have Russell Westbrook, Anthony Davis, and LeBron James, those three players, they take up our cap. So as far as us being able to make trades to get better or try to get all these different players that would help us, we don't have the cap space. This is what we have. Unless we can get creative, maybe make a little small trade, get a base more and somebody else coupled with a second round pick and maybe get us a little better player or something. But that's the only type of stuff we can do. So what you see is what you get, which is why I'm so pessimistic. Uh, but I've seen LeBron James led teams start slow. I, I predicted this. I predicted we would be 500 through 14 games. So this is not surprising to me. But the way that we've looked in this process has been deterring. It's been it's been disappointing. Uh, how is struggling supposed to look, right? Struggling is struggling. If you expect them to struggle, they're going to struggle. But you just don't want to see teams come into your gym when you're up four in the, out of the locker room in the third quarter and then just blow you out. You up. You feel me? You coming out the locker room up and you in that quarter down 30 plus. Some things are just things you ignore, and other things are things you got to take a look at. I think tonight's loss, despite all of the deficiencies in our roster, we need to take a look at our, our, our coach because that those lineups he put on the floor were not the best combination of players he could have put on the floor at that time, and it cost us a game. He did not stop the bleeding. The lineup he put in to stop the bleeding was trash also, and we continued to struggle, and that is what I saw. That's just what I saw. My name is BDO44. Thank y'all for rocking with me, and I'm out.